I think we stopped here, right? So in this slide, slide number 147, let's start from 148. So now we are going to see how the oxygen demand is calculated. Oxygen demand is necessary because we want to do, since we said uh, aerobic uh, and the activity sludge aeration tank, so that's what we have to do. An estimate of oxygen requirements may be made from the BOD5 of the waste and the amount of activity sludge wasted every day. Uh, if it is assumed that the, all the BOD5 is converted to the end products, the total oxygen demand can be complete, computed by converting BOD5 to BOD ultimate, right? So that means this is the equation. Uh, this is the glucose, uh, no, sorry, the cell, then oxygen is carbon dioxide, water, ammonia, and energy. It could be methane too. Uh, sorry, methane will not be coming here because it's not anaerobic. Or aerobic doesn't create methane and hydrogen sulfide and other things like that. So anyway, the ratio of the gram molecular weight of oxygen to the cell, so would be like, say, if I calculate this one, I get uh, 113 and five times 32 will give me this. That means 1.42 times of oxygen required per cell of the, the molecule. Thus, the oxygen demand may be estimated by uh, 1.4 times to Px. Px is the wasted, amount of wasted we are doing. And basically, conversion is basically looks like from BOD 5 to BOD ultimate is 1.42. So the, the mass of oxygen required may be estimated as uh, Q into S0 minus S 10 to the minus 3 kg per gram divided by F minus 1.42 Px. Okay. So the amount of oxygen required would be the, something like that. But this is the, would be the waste test, right? So we don't need that. So that's why we have to subtract that. So Q is the wastewater flow, S is the visible BOD, S is the affluent uh, BOD5. Uh, we know calculated from equation 521, right? F is the conversion factor for converting BOD5 to uh, BOD ultimate. Most of the time it is 67%, two third of uh, BOD ultimate. BOD5 is two third of BOD ultimate. We can consider 67, 68, sometimes we'll uh, assume it 0.68 or 0.67 or things like that. Px is the waste activity sludge produced. So we have seen the equation before of the Px, right? So here is the problem we would like to solve to understand the use of these equations, uh, including the amount of oxygen that we might need for that amount of air ultimately. So the city of Marietta has been directed by the city board to upgrade its primary wastewater treatment plant to include a secondary process that can meet the effluent standard of 20 milligram per liter of BOD and 30 milligram per liter of suspended solid. Very similar to the last one, right? Uh, five, five, problem number five, five. They want to select completely mixed activity sludge system. That's what we learned. The BOD five of the suspended solid is estimated to be 50% of the suspended solid concentration. Design the addition tank, including FM ratio, sludge return, sludge to be wasted each day, volume of year to be supplied, Keeping the L is to W within 4 is to 1, and the maximum depth is 5 meter, and the maximum length is 20 meter for the tank. Assume the reasonable values of the missing parameters from FE exam handbook or from literature. So let's see, I think it is given here. So the effluent characteristics and the few things are given. Flow is 0.15, and BOD5 is 95. This means this is S0. Assume the values of the growth rate K is equal to 100. Is the same as 5 5 uh, mu m equal to 2.5 kd equal to this y equal to 0.5 and mls mlvss is 2500 milligram per liter mlss is 1.2 times mlvss and wastewater temperature is 25 degrees celsius uh, 25 degrees celsius means we have to know the temperature because of we may need to convert something based on the temperature and again, this is the table. I think I showed this table before. So we used to get those values. Now we'll go, go to the solution for that problem. So, again, uh, this is the, we'll be using the, uh, the uh, what is called Excel. So Excel will be using the Excel spreadsheet to do that. Uh, so I input the data already. Okay, I have all the data in there. Then S uh, using equation 522, uh, S equal to BOD5 allied minus BOD5 in the suspended solid. 
it looks like I had a uh, 20 is a zero sorry uh, is uh, that is allowed minus 50% of the suspended materials are BOD and suspended materials allowed is 30 so I got five It's becoming same as the before but the values are not the same right so don't mix with this one with the five five again the main saturation time using equation 521 s equal to this this equation we know 521 and this is the converted equation if I put the values and I got very close like 14.48 days then hydraulic retention time equation 522 uh, can be calculated using this equation 522 equation and converting theta equal to this so if I put the values here so ultimately I get 0.151 today equal to 6.63 uh, hours right 6.63 hours so then from there we'll calculate the volume using the equation 518 volume equal to qt the volume i got is 1559.55 meter cube now i'm going to do the design initially i consider one tank okay then the surface area of the tank i consider the depth is five meter so let's consider the depth is five meter i should have set somewhere around here the depth of a tank is 5 meter is the max. I get calculated 1. Then the surface area would be equal to volume divided by depth is equal to 391.9 meter square. Then uh, let's consider L is to W equal to 4 is to 1. So L equal to 4 W. So this is a mistake. Okay. So then the surface area would be A equal to L into W. So L equal to 4 W into W. Ultimately W equal to be square root of uh, whatever it becomes right uh, surface area divided by uh, the the uh, four value here whatever the ratio l is to ratio so if i do that then i get 9.9 .9, then l would be 39.59 so in this case the the l max was what l max was uh, i think 25 so this is more than 25 so l max is not okay change the number to tank three I got in number three uh, three tanks because I did a uh, calculation from here. Sur surface area, whatever I have, 391, three, 391 or 392 basically, divided by L max times LW equal to L max times LW. L max is 25 and LW equal to, uh, I mean, W equal to be 25 over 4 right because l is 25 and 4 so if i do that the rounding it i get three tanks so if i use the three tank then surface area for each of them would be 130 meter square then the w would be equal to 5.7 and the l would be equal to um, 22.86 i think it should be uh, 4 not uh, or 4.5 whatever we have in there so okay four so it should be four it's a mistake it's a typo so don't worry about it so it's a type of four so that's how i got like say what i got um uh, basically i got a uh, 5.75 is the width length is almost 23 meter and depth is five meter so my design is and the amount of volume that i'm providing with this design is 1959.55 if i check with it is more than enough uh, usually you can provide four tanks the smaller size a little bit so it's a kind of common practice but uh, you may not need to do it because it's arbitrary design then foot to microorganism ratio again we can use the equation 526 i have a little bit of description over here so in this case fm ratio if i use these values then i get 0.25 which is within the limit 0.1 to 1 now MLSS will calculate the MLSS means uh, is 1.2 times MLVSS 3000. Now we have to calculate the SVI since we have a temperature is 25. Okay, and the ML uh, v MLSS is what MLSS is would be 3000. So 3025 I come up with here. So it should be it looks like somewhere around here, right? Somewhere around here. So I took it as a 175 milliliter per gram. So estimate solid concentration of return XR equal to 6 over SBI. 10 over 6 is this, SBI is this. I got 5714, which is a little bit more than 5000. That's okay. Certain cases we may be able to use it, but uh, it could be different then. 
No, it's not. It's not. It's not good. That's good because I'm not looking for the MLSs or MLBSs. This is the recirculation part of it, right? So that's fine. So then we can calculate the QW wasting amount using this equation. So QW, I get 0 0.0008 meter cube per second. So then if we don't consider the the uh, XR is a, a, a QW is the, uh, the negligible, then we use this equation. So, and if we use this equation, we come up with 0.16 for the QR, okay? So, and if we don't consider XE uh, is an, as a negligible, then we use this equation to calculate the value of QR. So we get 0 0.162, 0 0.17 is basically the same. That means the value of XE is kind of negligible here. Then using equation Q35, I can calculate the Y observed from this. I get 0.29. Then with the equation of 536, uh, we can use the PX, net wasted activated sludge per day. We can calculate that. I come up with 338 of kg per day of BSS. The total mass produced includes inert materials using the relationship between MLSS and MLVSS is basically 1.2 times this. Uh, that's what uh, 1.2 came from the relationship between the MLSS and MLVSS and this I get 405.9 kg per day increase in MLSS then the the if I uh, the lost in the effluent so SS lost in the effluent would be Q minus QW XC uh, times this these are conversion and other factor if I use this value then I get 386.86 so the mass to be wasted is increased with this we got this value and loss in this 86 i got 19.24 kg per day so mass to be wasted per day is around 19.24 i didn't ask for that but we can calculate that in this equation in this problem solving before the oxygen demand can be computed two inputs must be entered the first input is the conversion factor of the bod5 to bod ultimate Right, so as I mentioned that the second input is the transfer rate of uh, air to the uh, percent of the oxygen to the air transfer rate. So BOD5, I consider 68%, 0.68, and the transfer efficiency is 10%. That means 10% of oxygen from the air would be transferred to the water as a dissolved oxygen because the microorganism cannot take any oxygen that is not dissolved. The mass of oxygen required may be estimated using this equation, 538, you remember that? So mass we calculated using everything here, I get 1234.97 kg per day of oxygen. Now, since we'll be using the compressor, we need to convert those into volume. So if we do the volume, then I need to know the air density. Air density is usually 1.2 kg per meter cube for 20 degrees Celsius, then it will go down a little bit. I did the adjustment, I got 1.185 at 25 degrees Celsius. Then mass of the air contains, uh, by mass, air contains 23.2% of oxygen. Below is the comparison of 100% transfer efficiency and the input efficiency, I think we did 10%. So this is the volume of the air would be mass divided by rho density. That means this, uh, then times uh, percent of oxygen, eta is 100% efficiency here and here it is 10%. So ultimately, if I do calculation, I got 44.92 meter cube per day and 44.921 meter cube per day, 10 times more, right? Because it's 10 times more. So if I know the volume, I should be able to design the compressor to provide the oxygen uh, to this, the amount of air to this and amount of oxygen that we need uh, through the system. So we are going to stop here uh, in this case, slide number 160. Then we are, uh, the next lecture will start from 161.